Uh, let's talk about a stash. Uh, stash is our database backup, uh, you know, and Kubernetes volume backup solution. So this one uh, actually is going to be uh, quite a number of big improvements. So this is actually, we have been working, I mean, kind of late 2022, I mean, have been discussing internally, like do a next version of Stash. Uh, so so that, that we are calling it V1 Beta 2 API in this slide, but it, it might change kind of how we put it out uh, in the final version. But this will be uh, the requirement analysis and sort of the API design for this new, new API has been completed uh, in the last month. So, so we kind of have a clear idea where we want to go. You know, the implementation work has just started um, in the last week or so, last few weeks. Uh, so what are the major things that we are looking to do in this, uh, you know, kind of, uh, I would say it's kind of a complete rewrite really. Uh, I think uh, one of the things is just to support more flexible topologies. Right, like today we have a sidecar-based approach, but then I have a job-based approach, but there's kind of, you know, uh, one or the other, but in some cases you need both. Like, for example, you might want to take a, you know, like a MySQL dump-based uh, backup for a MySQL database, but then you also may want to run a continuous archiving using bin logs. Today, things like that, you know, isn't really possible. You can do one or the other. Right, so so that's kind of a, one of the areas. I already talked about this storage layer revision that has happened in the Kubernetes. Um, you know, it, uh, like they have introduced things like ephemeral um, containers. Like you know, today uh, if you need to kind of access the disk, we have to go to the disk itself and inject a sidecar on those all the times. By doing these ephemeral containers, you know you don't have to run those sidecars at all times. You know if you are taking a backup only like four times a day, you can inject a sidecar into the pod, you know, or for those four times a day, and you know kind of save on the CPU memory that's used for these operations, right? So there are like things like that that can be optimized, improved, uh, you know. Uh, that will be part of this. Um, another key focus is on UI. Uh, so, you know, so far everything has been uh, terminal focused and uh, which is, uh, you know, has served as well, but, uh, but as things progress, users do expect to be able to do more things from UI and today certain things are sort of hard to access from the UI because it's just, uh, you know, like building a UI focused API. So designing those custom resources and things like that in a way, or, you know, having all the data available so that the UI can be built quick and fast. Uh, like, you know, like if, you, if a backup fails, be able to access the log for that backup, things like that, you know, making sure everything can be done, uh, you know, the best it can be, best in class in terms of database backup solution, uh, data backup solution in Kubernetes. So that's the focus. Uh, yeah, I mean, I kind of already talked about the other ones, physical backup, point in time recovery support. So, so you know, so overall, I mean, there are even interesting cases that we are looking to support. Uh, one of the requirements that we have from our users is, okay, uh, I want to take backup into multiple uh, sort of uh, buckets, like a, you know, their disaster recovery planning requires and they have multiple uh, offsite backups, not just in a single uh, location. So, so like today that's kind of really difficult because you have to set up two backup configuration but then data kind of copy twice and all that. We want to make sure that those things are done in a properly optimized way when you recover, those are also available appropriately. Um, so this is kind of the uh, big items. Uh, we have a plan for a stash. I think uh, once this is available, uh, we'll be integrated into KubeDB. So that, that will be another sort of big item here. Uh, 